Welcome to the Gear Slum, your one-stop shop for all things guitar culture nonsense. Maya He. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, Maya Phil? Maria Ha Ha. I don't even know if that's what you're doing, <laughs> but that's what reminded me. So you don't have to. That is exactly what I was hoping would happen. Oh, man. Maria Phil, you were supposed to say Maya Ho. <laughs> or Maya Ha, maybe. Aaron, what? Maya he, Maya ha, Maya ho. It's my, I think it's Maya he, Maya ho, Maya Probably he, so. Maya ha ha. Maya ha ha. Yeah, that's that sounds right. He ho he ha ha. But you guys nailed it. So live what is that? Yuma, hey, y- Uma Uma hey, or Yuma oh, Yuma or something? Oh. Numa Numa. N- that's what it Numa, is. Numa Numa. Hey. Dude, I remember when viral I videos know. were so pure and yeah, innocent dude, like that? that? And did you ever watch that one, um, Aisha, the, the jelly man had this, there's a skinny, no. like, it's like, I don't even know. He was some like Eastern European kid. He called himself jelly man. And he wrote this song called Aisha oh. and he kind of like sang it and it was really, really good. It no, was that. but when I was in grade school, there was a song that went like this, Aisha, you were the girl that I never had and I want to get to know you better. No, this one went. Aisha, Aisha, passing me by. Does she go again? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I Googled Jellyman and it reminded me of that freaking James this... Taylor song called Jellyman Kelly, which is like the oh, weirdest. Know. It's like a, it sounds like something that would have been on Yo Gabba Gabba or something. It's like this weird kid song, yes, but was also like, <laughs> dude, freaking but, James Taylor, but was also <laughs> born out of like an acid trip, you know? Okay, yeah, yeah. Yesterday we went to the beach, um, like to the bay, just to sit and have like a mini picnic with the kids. And this kid was r- riding by on his bike, and he goes, as he's riding past us, he goes, into the thick of it. <laughs> 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 and then he rode back the other direction, and he said, into the thick of it again. I'm like, is he performing for us? <laughs> yeah, Does he know? is that on our <laughs> So do, he's doing um, live TikToks. He's doing like live TikTok theater for us. Yeah. Yeah. He's just hoping that somebody's recording it somewhere. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. When you said jelly beans, it reminded me of I shoved a whole bag of jelly beans up my. <laughs> Remember that vine? Oh, no. Uh uh-uh. uh. I think you were, you were way more vine versed than the, the two of us i don't think i think it's only in hindsight though because i pretty much have just watched like i don't think i ever had oh, vine yeah. when it was a thing because i don't think it was as good uh, about mm-hmm. maybe it was like the reason tiktok is good is it gets it learns what to show you and what you want to see algorithm yes right yeah but like i don't know if vine is that one. way maybe it was I- I saw one recently where this this girl was she was being herself and then she was also being like the alg- her algorithm personified. Oh yeah. And she's like and she goes so then she says ah, so I I'm I'm getting tired I should go to sleep. And then the algorithm goes, "Whoa, wait, 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 wait. I I got I got one more for you. I got one wait, just watch this one." And then she goes, uh, is that like somebody's ring ring doorbell? And the algorithm goes, yeah. She goes, is that somebody breaking into somebody's house? <laughs> and the algorithm goes, yeah. And she goes, what happened to the people? And the algorithm goes, I don't know. Maybe they were murdered. And she goes, <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I want to watch right now before I go to sleep. Now I'm I don't think I can asleep. go to sleep. <laughs> and, then, and then the algorithm goes, oh, sorry about that. Well... I got some more uh, some more TikToks you could watch to get your mind off of that one. Maybe you should, you know, watch the next one. She's like, yeah, okay, fine. How it happens. Do you guys watch TikTok as you go to sleep? Or yes. in your bed when you're going to sleep? Um, no. That's a dangerous because game. I've I've done it before and it is I've been I've been trying it, it goes way I, so I need to too fast. You're stop like, doing it. How has it been a half hour? The thing, yeah, the one thing that has ever caused me to just like stay up way too late 
is if you go down a rabbit hole of like instant karma type videos <laughs> of people like getting beat up when they're trying to, you know, bully somebody or something like that. Yeah. Cause, cause yeah, they make you simultaneously angry, but also like amped up, you know? Yeah. It's like a huge, like uh build and release. Cycle. Yeah. What was the show on MTV that was like bullies? Uh, it was like MMA. It was like MMA. It was around the next. <laughs> it was around the 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 next. Uh, Celebrity death match. No, 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 no. Because oh. this was a reality show. And, Are you saying that was and, not a reality show? Yes, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. The claymation and, one. <laughs> so real people would say. So I'm uh I'm 22 years old and uh 7 years ago uh this guy Derek would always bully me in high school. Oh, and like you um, get to confront your bullies. Oh, and they would like find them. They would and they would they would MTV would find the bully and would say, "Hey, this person says that you bullied them and um would you like to be on the show in a fight?" And then they would fight an actual MMA person instead of the uh. the bullied person <laughs> the bullied person would just be on the sidelines just going yeah just yeah. watching their bully get beat up that's such a weird <laughs> yes it was such there's a like show. there's like Why no the positive to it there's no positive lessons to learn out of that it was just i guess they would just pay him right yeah, I guess yes because that's that's the thing it's like is that what that clip was that I recently saw of that MMA girl just like beating the crap out of that middle aged lady? <laughs> oh, maybe. I just saw it was in a it's ring like and like someone was bullied by their like, teacher. <laughs> or I mean like the person grew up, right? <laughs> yeah, like every middle aged like lady used to be years. a young woman. But are they doing yeah. like this you bullied someone Seriously. Like thirty years ago? Yeah. <laughs> They'd have to pay him so much because also just like the idea it's almost worse going onto a show like as the bully than it is to get beat up. Like that's a pretty, right, but the bully, you know, I know that's, yeah. that's how like s not self-aware you are. Right. Yeah. Like, like, do you want to go yeah. on the show and be the jerk and also get beat up? Yeah. That's amazing. But it's like, you're going to get paid for sure. And I think some of them are like, some of them seem like they're like, no, I know. Like, I think I've got a shot. <laughs> like hey showing this this no like, one's just like i i deserve a beat down i accept the beat so down. get this <laughs> never yeah it's bully never that. it's never that bully beat down is an american reality nice. television series okay bully beat down there it is created by guess who it's a name that you might actually know because he created so many um, things aaron sorkin mark <laughs> burnett oh yeah he no did. way like, you see his name on tons of stuff right yeah, the Isn't first one I remember Christian? is, is um, <laughs> Double Dare. He yeah, like a lot of those. No. Mark Burnett is created Double Dare? Yeah, I think you I are thinking of someone think so. else, though. Yeah. Like, Mark Burnett has created a ton of... Survivor. Shows, Survivor. The Voice. Shows. Shark oh. Tank. Maybe I'm wrong. Lucha Underground. No, I know what you're talking like about. Miller though. Burnett production or something. Yeah. You mixed that. You you convolved that with uh, yeah. Mark Summers. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh. Mark Burnett. Dub. Yes, Mark Summers Dare. was the host of Double Dare. I saw this. <laughs> There's like all those. Everyone tells that story about how he's this like clean freak germaphobe, and it was like such a big deal for him to be on Double Dare. Uh -huh. And I saw this interview with him. Have you guys ever heard that? No. That's like a commonly held. I've heard that about Howie Mandel. I think it's more true about Howie it's Mandel because I saw this interview with Mark Summers and he was like, I don't know, I'm kind of a neat freak a little bit, but I'm not really a germaphobe. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay, well, that puts an end to that. Okay, so here we go. In each in each episode of Bully Beatdown, uh, show host Jason Miller, Jason Mayhem Miller, who's an MMA fighter. Of course. Challenge bullies to fight against a professional MMA <laughs> professional. I think mixed. Oh, professional mixed martial artist. It's funny when you see it written out 
martial artist, you know, like a martial, martial artist. artist. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm like I'm a sandwich I'm artist. I'm an artist. A... Yeah, I'm an artist. Brett... Oh, what kind of artist? A mixed <laughs> martial artist. <laughs> To win $10,000. The money they would receive depended on their performance against the opponent. With any money they didn't win, going to the bully's victims. <laughs> the way they're just saying oh. all these things, just like so matter of okay, fact. Wait. If the bully so, managed so to submit or knock out the martial artist, as if that ever happened, they won a $5,000 right, right. bonus. Like who, like they aren't going to go find like, oh, my bully turned out to be an MMA fighter too. So let's go find him. Like. Oh, this is amazing. But a lot of them, let's see, I'm scrolling down because they have a list of the money earned by every victim. And a lot of them earned $10,000, <laughs> but none of them earned the bonus 5000 it looks like. Oh, no, the money wait, earned wait. by the victim. <laughs> it's all, like, most of the bullies earned $0. This oh, is, they don't get any money if they lose? If they don't perform well in the fight against the professional MMA That's guy. so stupid. Mixed sandwich artist. So they have to uh, they have to give them like a couple hundred bucks like per DM or something. I'm sure they get I mean it's just like Judge Judy. They get like a fee for being on the show and then hope yeah. that they win the extra money or whatever. Yeah. I apologize for thing. saying that like, Mark Burnett made double dare. That is not a, a accurate. Oh. What what okay. were you thinking of though? I think that Miller Boyette that Productions. Oh like, yes, oh, Miller Burnett. Boyette. Yeah. I think that's what it was. It was a Miller Boyette production. So but he is married to uh, Roman Downey. So, Did you know that? Yes. Touched by an angel. Well, she was the angel. Roman Downey Jr.? <laughs> Roman Downey Jr. I was thinking the other so day, or did we talk them... about that? Never mind. <laughs> that, was, that was with you. How people who name their daughters after themselves never call their daughters junior. But... Yeah. That's kind of weird. It's kind of cool that Phil named his son after that first, the first guy to win the that yeah after jesse carey jesse <laughs> jesse what was it what was mark? it jesse clark? jesse jesse mark jesse what is it phil no it was, it was jesse, clark it was clark? jesse clark. clark it is clark yeah i wonder if he'll have that Josiah wispy clark. black hair dude the day after like right after our podcast came out the um this is important guys we're talking about him or was that before no, they, they that, you I, heard it are there yeah, I realized I that after it. the fact too. I listened to it Phil, after the fact. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was like, we were just thinking about this guy, and yeah. I was like, oh, obviously, because Phil listened to it before no. we recorded. <laughs> yes, yes, because oh, they funny, talked man. about specifically the thing that I always thought was. Yeah, I remember thinking how how terrible it was in real time to watch this guy who clearly is made for this job. Just yeah. at every turn, get outvoted by this lunatic, who just seems like he was an like imbecile. He's like the kind proto of Sanjaya. Yes, totally. <laughs> Except Sanjaya was like more of like let's vote for this guy as a joke, and Jesse is like he was yeah, entertaining yeah. because it was like this guy seems like a train wreck and he's fun to watch. Yeah, and Sanjaya, yeah, but like he more, didn't deserve like, the job. Right. It to yes. Yes. It's like if they'd given the job to Tommy Boy, but at the beginning of the movie, instead of him <laughs> having to earn it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, like, after after Tommy Boy takes that bong rip right before he graduates college yeah. and crashes through the table, yeah. and then they're like, you got the job! <laughs> uh, um, okay, wait. What were we... Oh, no, Bully Beatdown. I want to talk about the show more. This... The show is okay. So you know how, like, obviously, there's lots of people who are probably saying, "Hey, I was bullied, and I would like to watch my bully get his yeah, come up." And literally, his... everybody who was bullied, right? But the only people they put on the show are the guys who are like, they're like super angry that they were bullied they're not like yeah it was just it, i mean it really hurt me it's never that it's always like <clears throat> yeah and he's he's a little bitch and i can't wait to watch him get his ass kicked like it, they're always like super like like super fired up who is that and, person like i've never met that person dude every just, time like, on the show watch I, but that's it, what i'm saying like got, i've never met uh, it makes you think like, can't get over the fact that they were bullied by this one specific person 
It makes you think of like they were probably also bullying people, you know. <laughs> yeah. They were I mean, mid-level it's just bullies. Like two, it's just like two bully friends that are like, dude, tell them I bullied you and like we'll win some money. <laughs> I'll split the money with you. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. You're also a bully. I'll That's split like, the money with you. Dude. I feel the same way about like, like every I feel the same way about every Judge Judy case. Because, right, like, like, people submit cases together. to go on there. Like, they look for cases, too, but people also submit cases. So it's like, hey, I'll file this case against you, and we'll get a free trip to L.A. or whatever. Yeah, that sounds great. I love free trips to L.A. To, like, Van Nuys, though. Like, where do they film that? <laughs> exactly. I don't know. <laughs> did, free did trip to Southern California. Way? Free trip to, like, the Valley. My Well, okay, did I did I tell you guys my former uh, my former boss... His wife was a um, one of the producers on Judge Judy. Have I, I feel like this? it's impossible that you haven't mentioned that after as much as we've talked about Judge Judy, but I don't remember it. Um. So she said that that it was so bizarre how she got totally used to it, but like how how often the people on the show had never ever been on a plane before um yeah. and you had to like part of the job as the producer was giving them detailed instructions on what they like needed to, to do how to actually get there yes and then it was like and, and then a limo would pick them up like that was like standard practice and so then they'd be like they go you know okay so you're gonna then uh, at the airport you're gonna look for a driver and the driver's going to let you in the limo, and they're going to be like, and they, and they were always like, wait, a limo? Like it was that, that kind of thing all all the time. And they're like, yes. And the limo, it's such... the limo driver is going to take your luggage, and they're like, wait, they're <clears throat> going to carry my luggage? Yes, they're going to carry your luggage. It seems so um, crazy, and... but it's such like a, a privileged like point of view, you know? Like, it's the same. I don't want to get political here. Aaron's not even listening, so he won't even be able to join us in this political conversation. But, like, oh, when, when kind of like, voter suppression is discussed and people talk about ID and it's like, everybody has an ID. That's ridiculous to think that anyone on the planet wouldn't have an ID. And it's like, well, yes, in your world, it's preposterous that somebody wouldn't have a driver's license specifically. But it's like... There are some people who don't, and there's like a huge percentage of people yes. who have just never, well, and it's the same way that like every time, you know how people say that like, oh, it's such a white person thing to clap when a plane lands. <laughs> like the, mm -hmm. the time that really happens is when you fly out of Africa into Europe, because that wow, flight is the crazy. first flight a lot of those people have ever taken in their lives. And the best, Whoa. the other part, and I've talked about this before. Oh, I thought you were saying uh, like the white people clapped because they're like. Oh, no, God, no, I'm saying like the people who are like <laughs> hopefully immigrating to somewhere yeah, else, yeah, you know, yeah. and wow. <laughs> and the other great thing is like they all like I, I've done this many times and literally every flight, as soon as it lands, as soon as it touches the ground, people start standing up <laughs> like <laughs> while this while the plane is still moving quickly. They're just like, well, <laughs> <laughs> this transaction is complete. That's funny. I will yeah. get my things this and be on my flight. way. <clears throat> and now that yes. the plane is no longer yeah, flying. Not flying anymore. <laughs> yeah. For the um, record, I'm a big fan of voter suppression. Oh, I knew that. Voter, yeah, they don't call it voter silencers. They call them voter suppressors. <laughs> yeah, because you can't truly silence somebody. Exactly. You they only call it voter silence in the movies. It. That's just the movies. Yeah. Yeah, that's just the movies. And it sounds different. It's always <laughs> it always sounds different in the movies. Yeah. Do you, you have you noticed like yeah, I watch a lot of gangster movies and there's this thing where they'll like I think it's in the departed where instead of like a silencer suppressor, he puts the barrel of the gun like up against a like a two liter bottle. Like into the mouth dude, of the two liter yes. bottle and shoots a guy through the bottle. Huh. Heck yeah, dude. Does that work? Yeah. It work a little bit. So when we were, weirdly, I have specific experience with this because Cause it just like a bunch of testing. the air blast or whatever. I did a bunch of testing on the Gao 8 Down. Gatling gun. Oh, nice. Yeah. Which is 
Bill, you, you on had the... one of those when you were a kid, right? Yeah. That's the gun that's on the A-10 yeah. Warthog, you know? I mean, you remember when it was invented? <clears throat> oh, the Gatling I, gun. I invented it. You invented it? <laughs> so it's this insane gun that shoots 30 millimeter rounds, but they were trying to build, like, this muffler for it, and they just <laughs> basically hung a whole bunch of tires up, like, oh, downrange, like and would, bas- like, shoot through the center of all these, you know, old tires that they just, like, pulled out of the dump or something like that. Mm-hmm. And it didn't really help that much. Mm. Is that it, is the one that you're talking about? Is that the one that like it shoots so fast that you don't you don't even really hear the like you don't hear the separation? It, it makes more of a sound like Bruh! like yes, it shoots seventy bullets... rounds a second. So so you don't yeah. hear the individual <laughs> rounds. It also people <laughs> say that like it stalls the plane, which isn't true. So the the war, uh, A10 is the one with like the shark on the front and then the Gatling gun is sticking out of yeah, its yeah. mouth, you know. And that's like a commonly held myth Sick. that it stalls the plane cuz the backward force is so much, but it doesn't. It does like slow the plane down fairly significantly, but it doesn't doesn't come close to stalling it. <clears throat> it seems dumb. Just for all you uh, military nuts out there. Plane. What's that? It seems done to assume that it would stall a plane. Like I, it, I, I see that it. Like obviously, it's it. It's an, a counteracting force. But there's yeah, absolutely like any, no way that it anything would for you know, if it hit a, if it hit a mosquito, it would technically be a force backwards and would slightly decelerate it. But um, yeah, but but actually, the force from the gun about equals the force of one of the engines, but it has two engines. Well, that's crazy. Wait, are you serious? Yeah, it's it's pretty wild because if it's if you do like a prolonged well, burst, corrected. you know, that's, but that's it's pretty freaking. But insane. they only do because that's the thing. People say that if they were to do like a long enough burst for like seconds and seconds, it would stall it. It wouldn't, but it would slow it down quite a bit. But normally they only do like, you know, one second bursts or whatever. So, Cole, if you had one of those, what would you shoot? Ooh, like what kind of which person? Bully, which bully? <laughs> which bully would you shoot? <laughs> which bully would you use to beat down? Uh, you... you think that'd be a thing? Like, and you can if you can dodge all the bullets, you get ten thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah, and if you manage to take the airplane out of the air, knock it out of the air, then you get an extra five thousand. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. When you said, I thought you were talking about like the old school Gatling gun where it's like the old machine gun that what was that where you had to like crank it. I mean, it is a Gatling gun, it is a Gat, it is a Gatling gun, but it's not a crank. Yeah, but the crazy thing is, like, we we showed up to the West Desert when they were doing the initial testing on this thing, and I know I've talked about this before, but the guy he's we're driving out into the middle of nowhere, and that was the reason they did it because they wanted to start bringing these testing these guns they're bringing these guns out of like hibernation mothballing but they have to like qualify that they perform well enough before they can stick them on a plane again and they would have to drive them all the way out to the west desert because they were so loud so they're building this bunker at the air force base to shoot them in and they needed to make sure it wasn't gonna like destroy the bunker because it was so violent you know from just from the sound waves they weren't going to but we had to take it out into the middle of the desert and we get there and go through all the security and stuff and then they fed us breakfast and I made the bad decision of getting an omelet, which came back to haunt me later. I'll tell that part of the story too. But we go out there behind this guy who's just in like a pickup, like a small, like a Ford Ranger. Or Hold something. on. I'm going to let you, I'm going to let you finish, but I'm just kidding. I'm going <laughs> to let, I'm going to let you. And, uh, and he just I'm like let... in smoking a pipe uh... had like the big handlebar mustache. He's smoking a pipe on a, an air force base, you know, while assembling, this right. gun basically pulling all these it's a gun with seven barrels and he's pulling all these barrels oh, out right. of the back yeah. of his truck and just like assembling it in front of us. It was the weirdest That's thing. Crazy. And then it shoots 70 rounds a second. So it's like this highly precise thing, you know, but yeah, it was pretty wild. So then about halfway through that test, we're just out in the sun all day, just like dying in the middle of nowhere. Um, I feel some, very acute diarrhea coming on. Uh-huh. Are you allergic to eggs or 
so uh, cute. I don't know. I'm starting to think my content. wife keeps pushing me to go you, to like some pushing you gotta take her on bully beatdown. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sick of you pushing me. <laughs> They're like, oh, when did you get divorced? Like, no, we're still happily married. I just want to see her get the crap beat out of her. But she keeps pushing me. <laughs> she MMA keeps pushing me stuff. and I want her to stop. I want you to make her stop. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure I'm either like allergic to a bunch of stuff or just have like IBS or something. Mm-hmm. Cause this is a very normal occurrence for me. But basically we're in the middle of this air force range and i had to run across over this like hill this like gradual hill so it took forever until i was like out of range of people (laughs) so they could see me and luckily there were some napkins in the glove box i grabbed some before i went and just like dropped this big old pile of chocolate pudding on the ground gross and out in the out in the desert in in the desert meanwhile being like i'm probably being monitored by drones or something like that you know (laughs) and i just like we got another one I just like found a rock and put it on top of it. Like I didn't, I made no attempt to like bury it. I was just like, well, maybe, but it's like no human is ever going to set foot on this ground ever again. So like, who cares? You know, it'll, it'll be some pet. They'll probably just think it was a cow pie. They'll be like, how'd this cow, how'd a cow get out here? Maybe they'll think it was a donkey. Do you guys have donkeys out in your desert? We have like wild donkeys out in the desert. You got donkeys in your desert? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) That's a very personal question. <laughs> dude, dude I, I was out in the desert. And I was t- taking this massive dump. It was, dude, there were so many donkeys in my desert. Dude. Oh, dude, uh, we might have to pause the podcast. I got some donkeys in my desert. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, BRB. So that was the time I almost became a national security threat. They're, they're like, uh-oh, he's running away with national secrets. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody stop him. He's got and then still, track. like, and, and then, then they, I still had to spend the rest the of the hill. day. I still had to spend the rest of the day just, like, hot and sweaty and, like, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's not like these napkins I pulled out of the glove box were, like, the ideal cleaning solution either, you know. Yeah, you so I'm sure it wasn't. Some dude wipes. Exactly. I'm sure I wasn't 100% on that front, so. A little yeah. glimpse into my world. And is that like a normal weekend for you? <laughs> yeah, <that's... laughs> shoot shooting out in the desert and just dump. shooting some guns out in the desert, <laughs> shooting out and jumping out in the desert, shooting out. <laughs> yeah. I definitely was not using a suppressor when I was shooting out. Okay, so we'll have to for go. The, for I'll the have to see if uh, we can find Bully Beatdown on Netflix or something like that. Oh, I'm sure that's one of the few things. That's one of the things that's not available to stream. Oh, get this. Yeah, it's the debut. No way it's going to be on Netflix. The debut episode was the number one program in its time slot among males 12 to 34. <laughs> 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 Talk about knowing your demographic. Ooh. Oh, man. Um, uh, in its time slot. In its time slot. What was the time slot? I don't know. It doesn't tell me. That. It, was it was like Monday at 11.30 p.m. or something. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. Exactly. It, yeah. It was up against Nick it at night. With, what was... um? Uh, This was not... I, I want to say singled out was no more. But it's, it was... It was Bully was Beatdown was airing opposite. Uh, Bully Beatdown was 2009. Okay. Oh, it started in 2009. Yeah, so... Yeah. It's kind of surprising. It's that recent right so so like was next still on the air well i guess that makes sense though because like that's the that's kind of like peak mma ufc saturation yeah of that like era of yeah yeah of mma is a 20 Ooh, there's apparently a 2020 fiction drama called next i don't know i don't know what stand what channel is next on MTV, bro. I know. I, I just think googled. This was Next. on the same at the oh. same time as Next. I thought I said T- they're on MTV the same show. network. Oh, Next was two thousand five. Okay. It was a dating game so, produced by Calissa Miller with her production company, Calissa Productions. If you don't know Gun Street Wiring Shop by now, you must be living in the dark ages. 
They are the premier hand-built wiring solution for all of your guitars. I have one in my Telecaster. I have a setup in there, five-way. It's great. Have it in my Jazzmaster. It's amazing. I actually put it in my Epiphone Dot. Brought the thing back to life. It's crazy. If you don't have it, you need it. Every guitar that you own will be better with Gun Street Wiring Shop. I promise. Also, if you join the street crew, you get a discount on the product. And I guarantee you'll enjoy it. If you get it and you don't like it, I will punch Cole in the face. That's my guarantee. Check it out right now at GunStreetWiringShop.com. Which one was next? I don't think I've, I remember that one. Next was the was one. where they're like on a MTV. date. Oh, go ahead. It Phil. was... It was very, it was very cringy, and painful to watch. There was, there was always one, uh, one guy and uh-huh. five girls, or vice versa. And uh-huh. I think actually towards the end of the show they started doing um, LGBT like a mix or um, something. Uh huh. LGBT episodes, but sure, um, sure. But there was like but, one primary and then like some suitors. Yes, and so that the. the the, it was they literally would pull a it was a bus they had a bus and the bus okay. had the the it was an RV oh yeah yeah I do remember that it was like an RV then, <clears throat> yes the the they be parked in front of a restaurant or whatever they were be parked and so the guys like yeah parked you well, do not know that word Aaron? They, were, they they were I said they were be they, parked oh they, they had parked. be parked I'm themselves. not making fun of what you said I'm just saying. <clears throat> They had they had to be parked themselves in the in the bus. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, and uh, so then, so the guy's like, "Yeah, I'm just looking for uh, you know somebody uh, hang out yeah, with. Yeah. Maybe you know who knows, blah, blah blah. Maybe it'll go somewhere. You know, I'm I'm just looking for a good time." Blah, blah, blah. And then the girl gets off. She's like, "Hi, I'm Jessica." And he goes, <laughs> he goes "Next, what's up, Jessica?" And yeah, and sometimes she was always they straight Jessica. up look at them and just say yeah. next. <laughs> Sometimes, yeah, they just dude. Straight up, say it's next, pretty rough. Like, right when they look okay, at him, that's which then like have, then, then you know, the like the producers, off. you know, the producers want them to do stuff like that because it's entertaining, but also like yeah. it's pretty messed up. But they all kind of look it, it like very similar, right? Like all the different, like let's say you had five guys, they, they're all kind of like they all look like MTV dating show guys. Like they all had yeah. Liberty spikes and like a puka yeah. shell necklace and bleach tips and like. Yes. They you all know, look sure like they're extras small from a Sugar Ray video. Yeah, this, this exactly. reminds me of Eliminate. Did you ever watch Eliminate? Eliminate. Eliminate. How does Eliminate? So Eliminate was, um, you would have, again, one suitor, one person, and then like three potentials that they're with. And they, the date I think would it was be on the like, CW, wasn't it? One of those show, channels, yeah. The date would be in segments. Yeah. So they would like go bowling yeah. or whatever. And then after bowling, <laughs> she would eliminate one guy. Oh, oh, they were all it was basically they, like they, they an entire season together. of Survivor. Yeah, yeah. Or it, yeah, it was like an entire season of The Bachelorette, but in one. And then they would episode. go yeah to the next part of the date, and she would eliminate another person. And yes, then okay. there would be two at the end, and they would have to choose one. Yes, remember yes. Blind? Which which show was it? Was it Blind Date where they would just like at some point they would just like show them making out in a, a hot tub, and they would be like blurring stuff out and stuff. Yeah, probably. Was that like late game blind date? There was a bunch of those. I think Eliminate got pretty That's dicey weird, too, dude. pretty racy. Have you seen there's this I'm new sure. dating show out? I forget what it's called, but it's like the people are wearing like these elaborate masks, like animal masks. It's so like there's the mask one, there's singer. A oh, is it like a mask like singer ripoff? But they're dating, so they go on like a date with each other and they're both wearing these crazy oh masks. it's like a furry thing isn't it sexy beast. i just saw a tiktok about yeah it but it's not day. it's not actually though i don't think it's sexy just like beast is what it's called they only wear the mask like for the purpose of the show so they can't it's basically just a way to get them together without seeing each other but it's, it's called super weird sexy beast and it's yeah, on netflix that's the one. Oh, this is sad this bizarre. slate magazine article says Netflix's sexy beast misses the point of animal costumes. Oh, that's too bad. Oh, you know, do they? I mean, I, I they agree. Really they missed the point? I mean, yeah. It's a shame. That's tragic that they missed the point. I love how, like, like, two years ago or three years ago, everyone's like, Netflix is like the future of programming. They got, like, Stranger Things and all these new movies coming out. Yeah. And now it's like, hey, we got this, uh, like, beast. pseudo-furry dating show thing. <laughs> Yeah, it seems like it's not entirely about right. furries, but it also kind of is. It's not about furries at all. And apparently, 
Apparently, so guess which Netflix... animal is the uh, is the villain? There's a is villain? the uh, puck of this show. Oh, because it's like a whole like well, there's a demon group of people that are all like cross dating. Some of them are kind. Aliens. I don't know. Some of them are actual like, animals. I'm kind of like into the shark right now. Yeah, some have like really cool. Like I saw one that was like some. It almost looked like a. It's like some kind of steampunk Frankenstein, which Frankenstein's oh, nice. already like slightly steampunk, which I don't normally like that steampunk aesthetic, but it was pretty cool looking. Like I appreciated the artistry. Yeah, yeah. The mixed martial martial artistry behind it. <laughs> um, apparently, <laughs> the beaver is the villain. Is Prince. Exactly. <laughs> beaver is the villain. The beaver is the villain. Tale as old as time. Apparently. Oh, this is weird, dude. Some of these things just don't see like I know I'm going to switch into like old fashioned white guy mode for a second. Like maybe it was OK 50 years ago okay. when someone had like some weird idea in their mind, like, I wonder if I should try this thing out. And they just were like, no, I shouldn't, because I don't know of anyone else that would ever do that. Like maybe that was OK, you know, before you could just go on the Internet and be like, hey. I found a hundred people who want to do this same idiotic thing. Always that I find want to your do. people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. I know. I'm I'm becoming the bully of this episode of Bully Beatdown. But yeah, you that's... have be bullied yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron, do you want to talk about? But maybe do you want to talk about that guy. No, let's just say that there was a guy in the, in our uh, Gear Slum group who had some. He was like very. How do I want to put this? What was he? He was like. Uh, he wasn't even like. He was like borderline QAnon, but he wasn't talking QAnon stuff. But he had the, the yeah, uh, the attitude of QAnoner, QAnoner. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it was a lot of it, a lot of the same it, talking points. Yeah, he liked to. He called our president the the pedo sniffer, um, and he. <laughs> He liked to, which is like, does that mean he's sniffing pedos had, or had to be clowned themselves, <laughs> which is the one? Thing yeah, I, be clowned. That was what I kept thinking. Yeah, that yeah, was they, the image that I kept. I had in my head is, is like, why is he sniffing? Who's, who's like pedos. going to jail? He's like a crime dog, right? Like a like at finding, the airport. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> when you go in like, through customs, this dude's just smelling everybody. <laughs> uh, I found one. But then over There's time, you can't. Definitely. It has an effect on you, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's a sad thing that happens. It's a sad thing. Anyway, I don't want to talk about him, but he was very dumb. What was the other he was thing really, he kept yeah. saying? He's. Well, I he appreciate I, the fact that he was less, at least like he said careless. I could careless. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's an idiot. <laughs> it. He, he was, was at least at idiot. first was like stupid and an interesting or not even interesting, but like in an, in a different way than a lot. Yeah. Of, yeah. Like we're, we're current, like people tend to sort of like congregate towards a specific ways of communicating online, you know? And, and he was, he at least seemed different than a lot of the idiots you interact with on a day to day basis. Yeah. Yeah. And then he wasn't, then he was just well, like, a. Parent. then he slipped back into the same old but, tricks. Yeah, except he he was different. Except that then then once he got like, once he seemed to get angry about, once he got going, I don't even remember what he was angry about. Then it was like <sighs> it was like nothing. It, it was he literally the election was stolen. He was angry because he kept trying to get people to like. He would ask the question. He would ask the question like, knowing what he thought you were going to answer, and he already had like his retort lined up yeah yeah and people refused to answer his questions and it made him very <laughs> upset they wouldn't play like, along. why yeah. just answer the question why do you keep posting word salad <laughs> right word salad it's like that's no, just a said, paragraph why do you, guy. Why do you <laughs> like why do you keep ejaculating word salad <laughs> yes yes that's that's word salad phil <laughs> we're recording this on a sunday and so far phil has sworn twice and said ejaculating Wait, did i it's the lord's day <laughs> my friend you said a B word and an A word, Phil. Uh, I remember when you were quoting B word and oh, when you were quoting was, Bully it, Beatdown. It's not me. I was quoting the Bully Beatdown guy. As if you yeah, were quoting just, exactly. So, you were paraphrasing. Okay. You were just how do you know? Citing from memory. Even. <laughs> That'd be great if you had memorized <laughs> this random reality <laughs> Those show exact from words twelve said, years ago. <laughs> uh, um, I remember what the post was. It. This guy has been in the group for years. He's been in our group for years. Weird. Oh yeah, and has for a never long time. said anything. 
Yeah. But it, but he came out of the woodwork to get super heated about, uh, I think it was uh, David posting uh, the uh, Babylon B guys shirt. Yeah. The I, I identify oh. as and vaccinated. David was like, yeah. Look at this. Yes, look at this jerk. And David was like, look at this jerk. And then we were all agreeing, yes, this guy's an idiot. And Babylon well, and we were saying like, and this guy's well, an the idiot. thing that started it for him was when we were like, we were talking about like, why is the right so bad at satire? Yeah, yes. Yeah. And that's and like, what got him really yeah. upset. It's like, hey, 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 the left is bad at satire. How dare you? I've listened to you guys and your liberal agenda long enough. But this crosses the line. Are you paraphrasing now? The right is Wait, that, very good at satire. He, he literally said this crosses the line. No, no, I'm just saying like he, I've heard lots of like, bad things, but that's the yeah, worst. Yeah, it's how like call me a saying, Ku Klux like, Klan member, but do not say I'm bad at satire. I, I my point is it's not the first time that we've <clears> said something that's like or right, that something right. left of center has been posted in that group yeah but for some reason this was the thing that got him he's been in the group for years literally years i looked it up yeah he's been in the group and he's never said anything but this was the thing that he was like oh i can't stand it i'm gonna say something <laughs> we he are good to at take that post on bully beatdown <laughs> mm -hmm. yes so you, you talk about the b i'm gonna take you on bully babylon beatdown <laughs> <laughs> babylon bully beatdown <laughs> it's true that like well i'm not gonna get into that but it is an interesting phenomenon that satire i guess it's like satire is interesting because it's attacking power right yeah yeah it's and like when you have in position of power is the i one mean yeah satirized like when you have all the power <laughs> it's hard to come up with a good satire yeah who are you gonna like write satire yeah. about like yeah i don't know yeah even this it's like the you know this whole the whole i identify as vaccinated is like tr is problematic in a lot of ways but it's like who is the victim there it's either people to who choose to get vaccinated which is like you know something that scientific that you obviously should do like i don't even care if it like screw you if you're if you're not like honestly but but also like trans people like those are the people that you're choosing to attack like it's so right, idiotic. Right, right. Anyways, it's the, yeah, I'm not getting political. Of, super guys. idiotic. The issue of punching down is the thing. And yeah, that's, that's really what it comes a, down a to, I guess. In, a topic in recent years, it's like, you, you know, punching up is, is, is always more acceptable. And then when it's like, hey, I'm going to make Hopefully. fun of somebody that's like less, uh, that's like less powerful than me. Yeah, uh, you know it's it, it's any any comedian who gets heckled on Twitter, and then that comedian go that's got like millions of followers, then they 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 turn on that one Hopefully. heckler, and and they go, hey everybody that loves me, look at this random person with forty <laughs> yeah. with forty followers exactly. on Twitter, they're horrible. And it's like and see ratio, and it's like well them. obviously. So now that you've like okay, I have yes. I have some late breaking. Is the little dongle in there? <laughs> I have some late breaking guitar. Sorry, that sounded. <laughs> is the little dongle in there? My son was giving me back my mouse, oh, and I didn't want him giving it back if it didn't have the little USB dongle in there. But yeah, no, you. Ew, don't. That was speaking of problematic. I'm about to get canceled over here. What's your late breaking? Um, I have some late guitar related news. Okay. If you guys have noticed, oh, let's oh, first me too. By the way. I've oh hashtag me too. So first we're going to talk about, I've been selling a whole bunch of stuff on reverb lately. So you guys have to guess how much I've earned in the last two yes, weeks it's true. on reverb. Is that even interesting okay. though? Is that just like me bragging or something? Can you, can I mean, you tell us, can you tell us? Okay. The Should I go through the list pedals? and tell you what I sold? Sure. That's Okay. So here's well, okay. And it'll it'll be like depressing to see. Okay, the first round I sold the Digitex Strum. So sad to see it go. Sadrum with the FS3X foot switch. 
Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. I sold the Switchblade Pro. Okay. Okay. Which is an Electro Harmonics guy. I, uh -huh. I sold the Boss. Was that the one that was a craft That was blues. the Switcher that you really liked? Yeah. For a I never even minute. used it, honestly. I like the concept of it. If I was going to do like okay. demo videos, it would be it would be perfect for comparing It was good two for pedals, the pedal you know? porch, right? Yeah. You use it for that. <laughs> so it, it it made it at least paid for itself it just through itself, ad yeah. revenue from the pedal porch videos. Mm -hmm. Um then the Wazacraft Blues Driver. Uh oh, okay. The TU three S, which is the little boss tuner without a switch yeah. on it. The switcher version. And then I kind of regret this, but I'll just buy another one probably. The rubber neck. Oh, you sold it. How much did you yeah. get for it? What? You're well, to guess hundred because we got them for pretty cheap. Now that you're saying that, I'm just remembering now that we <laughs> we got all those together. So maybe I shouldn't have sold that one. Mm -hmm. Um, we got them for less than a hundred bucks, didn't we? I think they were like one nineteen or something when we bought them. They were close to a hundred. Need to go back yeah, and they find. might have been a, like one was it, nine maybe. Was it in the Gear Slum email? Uh, probably. We ordered it with that, maybe. Yes. Oh, yeah. Pro Audio Star. Uh... Okay, 119. Who knew exactly how much it was? I did. Did you really? Yeah, I said 119. Dude. How much did you sell it for? Nice. You have to guess. I did. I said 150, but that's not right. Oh. Phil, what do you think? Bob. I said one dollar Bob. One thirty four. Oh nice. That's so before not bad. fees and stuff or after? Uh so you about broke even. That's it's gotta be bef uh it's gotta be after because it's like that's it's your payout, weird. right? It's like one thirty four eighty seven. Yeah, that's the payout amount. Oh, that's good. So it was probably like 150 plus 10 shipping or something. Yeah. Nice. Cuz the fees are pretty like well, part of it is cuz they charge people tax, so they factor that in. It doesn't yeah. they don't actually charge you tax. They just add it on to the person's total right. and then Whatever take it back purchases. out, you know. But it's still like people okay. factor that in yes. when they're buying something, you know. And then shipping stuff is like freaking expensive now. I was going to mm -hmm. ship just like a 1 pound box. And part of it was because it was going to New York, but it was going to be like 20 bucks, the absolute cheapest shipping. I just ship everything. It's going to be 20 bucks like to ship. First class, whatever, flat rate, and it's like eight bucks. I know. I, I ran out of padded envelopes, so I ordered some more and got those, but this was, I was in a bind. I was way behind, and I was looking for <laughs> looking a box to, to ship. Deal. Yeah. <clears throat> looking for so with all those payout. pedals, the payout amount was 527 so not terrible. Oh, that's all you sold? That's sick. That's a good amount. That's a good. No, but then then the second batch, mm -hmm. uh, oh, it was only two. Oh, I did sell the Nux Solid Studio for like 120 okay. bucks, which is good. It's Remember that nu amp, Sam? Nukes. 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 Give me some nukes. So, so it's been good to clear out some pedals. I mean, honestly, part of what led to that was I've been playing the Pod Go a lot lately uh -huh. and realized, like, I'm kind of, you know kind of into this they should call and... it they should come up with a pedal called d's nux <laughs> that'd be good <laughs> okay so and another one called ligma the the breaking news <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> breaking news i just got an offer on my dookie drive oh how much uh, oh. so i have, I mean, I have it listed for it? i have it listed for 350 because it's the original artwork it's the original artwork and so it was a rigid dish I, a rigid dish do, 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 do. <laughs> uh let's see here mark johnson from sweetwater it was 189 original okay so it wasn't i was thinking it was two something originally oh yeah i was thinking but 169 but 189 that's a lot yeah how that's much is expensive. the what's the new pedal Drive called pedal. that fod fod i think is like 139 maybe 
It's 170 on on. Oh, here. is it? I'm so sure you like can get it used. 20 bucks cheaper for pretty good. That's weird. That's, that a, that's a lot so of much. money for a without a, the green day. An MXR overdrive. Yeah, dude, that's crazy. And they're just like everywhere. You can buy them at all these. Well, like you can buy it on Sweetwater. Like, yeah, it's a like Guitar Center and everything. That's weird that it's so expensive. Okay, so the offer is for two fifty plus ten. Hmm. You got to crank that up, dude. You got to like. Come so what's the play? Like... I'm certainly not accepting it. I already rejected one offer because it was like. 210 or something stupid okay if it was me i would say 290 plus 10 you had it listed at 325 no 350 350 oh okay then i wouldn't go that low probably because here's I would, the last i would we look say, up recent sales i wouldn't haggle with this person i would decide what's the lowest i want to go and offer that and then if they don't take it just be done with them but that's yeah. just because there's quite a be few let's see here Two watchers, but there's, or no, two. Those are the only three watchers. What the crap? That's weird. Is, is one of them um, Jerry Falwell Jr.? <laughs> <laughs> so the last ones that sold, which sold for like between 300 and 350. So like 300 is probably a reasonable price, but only a couple sell every, well, yeah, like a handful every week. It's the kind of thing where, like, there's so many alternatives available for cheaper that you're not going to get a ton of Yeah, buyers. like, it's such a small market. But, yeah, if someone really wants it, they might be willing to pay that much. It's weird, too, because it's, like, I guess it'll increase over time, but it's the type of pedal that it makes you less, it makes you want to use it less. Because, like, part of what makes it valuable is the artwork. So if you ever, like, messed yeah. it up. And I know that's like a lame way to look at gear, but it kind of fat, especially when you can just buy an FOD, which is basically an identical pedal. It seems like if you really right. wanted this pedal, that's the move, right? That's the play, as they say. That is the move and the play. Okay, I'm going to counter at 300 and I'm not going a penny lower. There you go. What do you guys think about that? I can't wait to hear what happens. Okay, hopefully he'll accept it. Um, speaking of, of Reverb.com, I got an email yesterday or Friday telling me that my uh, King of Tone has shipped. Boom. And it should be arriving what will be three days ago when this podcast is released, but what is tomorrow now? So so you're about to eclipse. Now, but in the past of what is this tomorrow now? listening. When will then be now? <laughs> so that will be Monday, Soon. July 26th, that it is due to arrive. So you're going to eclipse my reverb earnings with one sale. So let me tell you my plan. I told you guys a little bit about my plan, <laughs> but I'm going <laughs> to tell everyone else my plan. And <laughs> I'd like to hear some feedback. Um, I've decided that if a Klon Centaur can sell for thousands of dollars, that I have no reason to feel bad about listing my King of Tone for an exorbitant amount of money. So that's what I'm going to do. But here's my plan. Check this out. My plan is you see a lot of them that are like new, um, whatever. My plan is to <clears throat> list it as unopened direct from Analog Man himself. So I'm just going to get the box, take a picture of the box, block out my address, and list it as brand new in box. And I'm going to list it for way too much money and see what happens. <laughs> And like a picture of the receipt that shows all the yeah yeah like what you yeah, ordered like it with. Put a screen of my email, the order. These are the things. This is it. Never been opened. See, as a buyer, I would not. Like all you need is one buyer, right? Yeah. So like, yeah. who cares what most people think? I guess. But like, it would make me skittish because if something is wrong out of the box then Analog Man isn't going to honor a warranty for somebody who bought it secondhand, I don't think. Maybe they would. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. But I was thinking, so, like, what are the reasons not to buy that? Just just if it's DOA. 
Like if something's wrong out of the box and you would but have caught it. But any pedal could just... be DOA. As long as it's not listed as like no returns, like as is. I know, but if you're buying a used pedal. Oh. Oh, so you're saying you would allow returns? I mean, I guess. Or I would say like if it's not in list, I don't know, like regular return policy. You can't return my, just because you want to. My but. regular return policy is no returns, period, <laughs> on reverb. Yeah, same. But so on reverb, like if if it arrives in a description or other than as described, like if you say it's working perfectly and it arrives not working, then yeah, it will yeah. like force you to return it. Yeah, so it yeah. would be the same. It would be the same case. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. The only person taking right. the risk is me. Because if it doesn't work, then I'm screwed. But what's the but reward to offset because... that risk? Do you think do you think somebody will be willing to pay more if it's never even been opened by that's another my human? Goal. That's my experiment. I'm gonna I wanna list it for like a thousand dollars and see if someone buys it. I mean see, it's I think, worth like I think this it's is a good worth idea trying because, it out. Because, because yeah. the worst that happens is it the guy opens it, it doesn't work, or girl, it doesn't work, and he goes, Hey, hey butthole, this doesn't work, and you say, Okay, send it back to me. Yeah, and then I say, hey, so, butthole. Yes. Butthole OG, you, man. Right. And then he gives you a new one that does work. Yeah. And then you sell that one for exactly. 700 do it again. bucks. Yeah. But then <laughs> do I lose, like, exactly. I lose shipping. <laughs> but, I mean, yeah, realistically, like, cares? there's no way. There's no way it's like, not going to work. Like, the chances of it actually, the chances of it not working are so minuscule, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm going to do it. I'm excited. <laughs> As long as the box is like in perfect shape, because the other is, the other risk is that theoretically something could happen between Analog Man and you, like uh -huh. in transit. I guess. But I would think I, that I love this you'd idea be able to see because that from the outside. Only because it it will be fun for the podcast. Like I've never <laughs> heard of anybody doing this before. So like, first of all, will it? Will you? Get no, I've seen like more money. People will do that. In fact, well, Reverb will usually shut them down. But remember there were people selling like the Mr. Black, like the the moon, whatever. Oh yeah, the super moon or whatever. Like before they even got super it. Supermoon Chrome. And they were yeah, they were like listing it for sale before they even received it, you know. See, that's not okay. Yes. I wouldn't do that. But no, I think Reverb was that. shutting those down. Well, that makes sense, because that's like you don't yeah, actually have a product that's like a pretty bad faith thing, you know? Yeah. I'm curious to see what reverb would do. See, but it's not like you're saying, hey, analog man, let me change my address real quick. Don't mail it to my house. Mail yeah. it to this person who just paid me $900. <laughs> you're not doing that. No. Although that would be awesome. That would be a really baller move. Well, I've, oh, yeah. that was another. I really like. So... I tried, kind of like low key, tried to just like, like, okay, hey, someone give me like two hundred bucks, and I'll give you my spot. Like I'll yeah. So there was when I bought my little stinker, my first one. Um, oh, crap. Who was it that originally bought it? Do you guys remember? No, you buy, I know it's somebody it that we kind of know. No, no. Oh, I bought Jimmy it new. Jr., right? it, was, it was somebody no, no, no. who regretted. Oh no! You bought the other one from Jimmy Junior. Your drum rap one. I see what yeah, you're yeah. saying. Someone like bought it from him, and then said, "Never mind." Yeah, someone bought it from him and posted. Well, so he, so Roni posted on whatever it was on his Instagram, I think. That hey, I got to get rid of this little stinker, so I'm going to sell it for nine hundred bucks to the first person who posts. And, uh, and this person got it. And then I didn't even see the thread until the next day. But when I was looking through the thread, I saw that he was like one of the first people, or maybe he had, he had like recommented again saying, Hey, I actually got it. And so I messaged him and I was like, Holy crap. I can't believe you got the, the guitar. And he was like, yeah, but I'm kind of having second thoughts. He's like, I'm thinking yeah. I'm just going to flip it, which for one thing is like, 
do you not think that Roni has been trying to sell it this whole time? <laughs> like, right. what yeah. makes you think, like, it's a good deal, but what makes you think you're going to be able to flip it? Because obviously... Get more for it from some... Yeah. yeah. Oh, it was... Okay. It was uh, Nick Hamilton. Oh, yeah. I kind of was going to say that. Remember, Is it the, that um, the silver one? No, the white one. Oh, the white one. I'm trying white to find the post blue on one. his Instagram. So... Uh, or maybe it was on, it was like on Instagram stories, maybe, or on Facebook stories or something. I don't I feel know. like it was, before but at any stories rate, was a thing. So it was 20, uh, okay. I'm going back as I, as I am want to do, I found the messages, but they're not loading for some reason. Dang it. Oh, I see. I see his post of your picture. With it. Oh, next the, to your of blue the multiple. Strap. No, next to the baby oh, blue nice. strap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's see. Uh, is that limited pedal? Let's see here. This little stick, uh, this little stinker, is still available from at RoniGuitars.com, and you can get it with your choice of maple or alder neck and almost any humbucker-sized pickups. What was the date on that? September 15th, 2016. Yeah. I know this isn't interesting, but I want to... I'm almost positive. Yeah. Okay, so... So I I posted something publicly to Nick, like on one of his comments, saying, oh, I can't believe you got it. And then he messaged me right away. This uh, is November of 2016. I'll flip it to you. And I'll I said, the little stinker. You. And he said, yes. And I said, do you even have it yet? He said, I'm not sure if I'll like it. If I don't, or if my wife threatens me, I'll sell it to you for what <laughs> I have in it. So you can tell he kind of quickly like moved away from the idea of flipping it. Yeah. Let me flip this thing that I don't And I was pretty it. quickly like, he was like, I can just have him ship it to you instead. And I was like, well, then what... Why do you need why to be you, in this interaction? Why do you at all? need to be part of this? <laughs> so that's essentially what ended up happening. I I just was like, I did end up, I, I sent him like 40 bucks just on PayPal just to be like, hey, thanks for letting thanks me for have nothing. it. But basically he messaged Paul and was like, oh, I don't think I want it anymore because my wife's going to get mad at me, but sell it to my friend here. <laughs> so I ended up getting it for nine I wonder if we could find that post where he, cause he posted, maybe it was on Facebook stories. It was some, it was on some method where I was never going to see it. And then somebody mm -hmm. posted about it in 60 cycle hum and was like, Oh, can you believe that Roni did this? Cause it was like pretty soon after they had done their episode about little stinkers. <laughs> So oh. stinkers. Oh yeah. But it was such a weird thing. Like he was basically trying to like, Hey, he was trying to sell me this guitar before he even had it for an up charge, you know? It's a, it's a bold move. Bold strategy, it's a bold cotton. move. Cotton. Well, this episode I think has gone on long enough <laughs> and we are going to end it right now. Thanks, Thanks for, for friendship. friendship. <laughs> Thanks for friendship. Thank mm -hmm. you.